Today, we're going to continue walking through the book of Acts, and we're going to come back to the same three passages of Scripture that we've been looking at for the last couple of days. Uh, just right here at the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two days ago, we talked about this idea that we as a church, if we're not careful, we can get complacent and we can just gaze up into heaven and get comfortable and forget that Christ has given us a work to do as we expectantly wait, await His return. Yesterday, we engaged in a discussion about what Jesus is doing right now. What is, what is He up to in heaven today? Now today, we're actually going to talk about uh, this, this idea of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the Bible say here? After he said this, this is verse 9 of chapter 1, he was taken up as they were watching, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going, they were gazing into heaven. And suddenly two men in white clothes stood by him, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way that you have seen him going into heaven. Let me read that last little portion again. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you have seen him going into heaven. So friends, as we take a moment to explore this verse, let me just say that one of the core foundational beliefs of the Christian faith is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is possible because we believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And friends, we think about the resurrection today and understand that ever since the resurrection took place, the enemy has done all he can in order to uh, diminish, demean the testimony of the resurrection. But friends, I'm telling you today that the Lord Jesus Christ is alive and well, interceding on behalf of the saints. He is resurrected. And the Bible tells us that on this day, the disciples watched him get taken up into heaven. As a matter of fact, if you go to Jerusalem today, on top of the Mount of Olives, there's a monument there at the place of ascension. It's called the Mount of Ascension. It's the place that's marked, the place where they stood there and watched Jesus get taken up. Now, friends, the Bible says they're standing there gazing when two angels stand beside them and say, why are you looking up into heaven? This Jesus who you saw go into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. So, friends, I want you to think about that for just a moment because this is what I said a moment ago, one of the core beliefs of the Christian faith, that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return. Friends, we preach it, we teach it, we believe it, that one day in the near future, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return in glory. And friends, I'm telling you today that I believe that day is closer than it's ever been. Jesus teaches us in the Gospels that the signs of the times will be all about us and that we will be able to see these signs and that we as believers should be able to recognize these signs that are coming along the way. And friends, I'm telling you today that the signs are rapidly multiplying. We are seeing these things fulfilled in our day. And the world is increasingly on edge. And we know that the day of our redemption as believers is drawing nigh. We know the Lord Jesus Christ could return at any moment is an imminent return. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. Imminence means it could happen at any moment. And indeed, the Bible tells us that's exactly how the Lord Jesus will return. Like a thief in the night, in the twinkle of an eye, he is going to return. Now, how is he going to return? Well, these angels just told us, in the same way you saw him go, that's the same way he's going to come back. So we believe as Bible-believing Christians that there is coming a day where the Lord Jesus Christ will one day, once again, put his feet on the Mount of Olives. We believe there is a day where the Lord Jesus Christ will one day cross that Kidron Valley and enter into the Eastern Gate as as the, the risen Savior, the King of 
the universe. We believe that one day every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We believe that one day the whole world will see him, even those who pierced him. We believe that one day the Lord Jesus Christ will return. Now we know in scripture that the Bible teaches us of, of, of two different events that are going to happen. One is the rapture and one is the second coming. Now the rapture happens first and then the second coming happens after it. Now, there's a lot of discussion on when these events take place. Do they happen simultaneously? Is there a seven-year period in between? Is there a three-and-a-half-year period in between? When do these things happen? Well, friends, on this little daily devotional here, I don't have time to dive into time frames and when all these things will happen and, and how all these things are going to take place. But we do know this, that the Bible tells us in, book of, in the book of 1 Thessalonians, Chapter number four, uh, the Bible says in that passage of scripture, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, concerning those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose again in the same way, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. For we say this to you by revelation from the Lord. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly have no advantage over those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend. Remember, they saw him going up, but now he's coming back. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds. Remember, the cloud took him out. To meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So friends, the rapture comes first. And the rapture is that moment where the dead in Christ are, are, are raised up. And those of us who are alive at the Lord's coming will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And together we will always be with the Lord. Now there is a second coming that happens, remember, in the air, but there's also the second coming and that's the moment Jesus puts his feet on the Mount of Olives. And so these two events are both mentioned in eschatology and like I said, there's a lot of debate over the times of which all these things take place. But here's the idea that you need to take from this devotional. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. There's no doubt about it. He will turn. He will return at an hour you least expect it. Now, friends, I have to ask the question, are you ready should he come today? Now, I know there are many out there that will mock this and will say, well, you know, this is never going to happen. Uh, it's been 2,000 years. Friends, understand that you are a fulfillment of prophecy. Second Peter says in those last days, the scoffers will scoff and say, where is the promise of his coming? The Bible even says they did the same thing to Noah, who preached to his generation of the judgment of God to come. So friends, there are those out there today that say, oh, it's hogwash. The Lord Jesus Christ will never return. Scoffers are going to scoff. Listen to me. Friends, the Lord Jesus is is going to return. Do not be caught in, in a posture that doesn't have him in your heart should he return today. Do not, do, not, do not allow him to return today and not have made yourself ready. I'm warning you. I'm telling you. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. Have you made your preparations should that day be today? So friends, I want to urge you, if you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, to give your life to him today because his return is imminent. And friends, I'm thankful today to know that I'm born again, I'm saved, and if that should happen today, I'm going home to heaven. Won't you come and go with me? May God bless you as you continue your day, and I look forward to joining you next time on New Horizons. God bless.